Bora. Mini gray. Nice. That's nice, Blackbird. for about, oh, probably about 18 months now. Um, I am self-employed. I started out as an apprentice with Johnson Electric in Carthage. Um, I make from about thirty-five dollars to $50,000 a year. Okay. Well, some of my basic duties would include working with switching power supplies such as this, uh, uh, analog uh, multimeters. This is kind of a crude example. Uh, circuit breakers, such as this. Uh, working by yourself, I'd be working with by myself a lot of times, traveling long distances a lot of times to customers, and stuff like that. Employment possibilities would be, um, there's really, you don't really advance in position. Uh, you usually start as an apprentice, maybe then you become a journeyman, and then a master electrician. But usually don't advance, usually in pay is the advancement, not really in position. Educational requirements in the electrician, electrical field uh, would mostly be um, a high school course in uh, such as electronics um, at the Vote Tech or something like that. Um, probably a junior college might help, but mostly you'd want to have on-the-job on the job training. Uh, that would help a lot as an apprentice or something like that, get a job, you know during the summer or something like that with working with an electrician, stuff like that. As an electrician, you got to be on schedule. Um, uh, you got to be on time because like for the person, for the people that you're working for, if you're in their house working on a uh, panel or something like that, uh, you have to be on time because they're paying for your, your, the labor that you're charging them. And if you're jacking around and not getting the job done or screwing up on stuff, that's costing them and you may not get hired again for the job. And then also, if you're on site and they're, you're on site building a house or something like that, and you're installing the wiring through the whole house, um, you got a whole bunch, you got a lot of people working, like uh, uh, drywallers plumbers and stuff like that, you all got to work together. If you don't get your job done and the drywallers put up their walls and you don't got the wires in there, you're screwed up. And everything has to be on time to get screwed up and you don't get hired for that job again. And also, by word of um, mouth, people tell other people how, how your job was, how you did. And, you know, if you don't do a good job, you can get hired for the other job. It's crucial that you're on schedule and you don't jack around on the job. Stuff. It helps in the electronic field if you know a little bit more than just uh, your basic household uh, wiring, electrical wiring, and industrial wiring and stuff like that. It also helps if you know a little bit about other stuff like uh, oh, low voltage equipment like telephones, installing telephone wiring because it's kind of handy when you're installing that. Uh, if the customer asks you to install telephone wiring, if you know how to do that. and um, also installing, sometimes you may get asked to do, you know, like installing satellite equipment, specializing in other, other stuff, also brings in customers and stuff like that. Okay, today we're at the SCPP Incorporated. Uh, we're going to be pulling a simple circuit breaker. So if my cameraman would like to zoom over here. 
Alright. Oh, I've already pulled the screws. I'm just showing you an example. Go ahead and pull that off. You want to be careful when you're working inside these boxes. Uh, right here you got your ground strip. Ground, you can play around with that. But what you don't want to do is touch that. That right there uh, could kill you. Um, that right there is 120 volts. That's 120 volts. Those combined are your 240. Like you use in your stoves like that. They combine those. But like this circuit breaker is 120 volt. And so you simply pull that out. And that's basically all you want to do with that right now. And then if they want some new wiring, what I do is I bring in the wire through either the bottom, pop a new hole or something like that. Bring it in and just wire it into the new circuit breaker. Just purchase a new circuit breaker. Just simply install it. Be careful not to shock yourself. Alright. Get your wiring done and you start to put it in back up. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to spray down some of these components right here. Some WD-40 because they're kind of rusty and corroded, so I'm just going to go ahead and spray them down. You know, <coughs> Oh my god, are you okay? Hold on, call 911! Alright, this ends <laughs> this ends our presentation. Uh, but for today I just wanted to show you <laughs> uh, that you can't get hurt on this job, so be careful.